Cancerian Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Signs, and Crosswatchers, welcome to your timeless chakra read. I am your reader, Mark Angelo Lyons, Mal, for short, professional witch, professional intuitive, president of Drawing the Circle Productions since 1998. Almost 25 years in service at the time of this timeless recording. I am the author of Words of Grace from a professional witch available on Kindle. There's a link in the description box. The dedication is to my mother, a Cancerian sunside who I just spent some time with over the weekend. Uh, it was really great seeing her at the time of this timeless recording. So there's a link in the description box for the Kindle version of it if you would like to preview it, including... Uh, that uh, dedication to my uh, crab cake mom. And if you are in the description box, by all means, do check out my Patreon. Patreon.com <gasps> slash Drawing the Circle, the best career move I ever made to date at the time of this timeless recording. I'm having fun saying that today for a timeless read. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, my subscription platform over there. We got eight different levels of subscriber. <laughs> this recording. Seekers, humans, heroes, angels, witches, immortals, mystics, gods, goddesses. Gods, goddesses is one tier. They're the top tier. They get everything. But all of my subscribers across the board, regardless of level of subscription, uh, get a couple of things in common. For example, they get all the extended readings, all the part twos to the part ones here on YouTube. And they're juggernauts. You can pay-per-view on Vimeo if you like, uh, but all of my extended reads are timeless and been doing them for a bunch of years, so really, they're getting a lot of them for their subscription uh, price, as well as they get what's called a daily check-in, an unlisted YouTube live stream link where they chat with me every morning, uh, talking about the day's astrological weather, the magical applications, the spiritual implications, always ending with a prayer, a blessing, a spell, a little meditation, something, something to send us on our way. It's my favorite way to start the day. And yeah, I'm glad it rhymes. And uh, there's just a lot of cool stuff going on over there. And considering I've been on there a little bit over a year and a half, just about, uh, honestly, I love it so much. And I love live streaming there every day. So if you are looking for a deeper dive, more magic, more miracles, more mysticism, and more Mal, uh, by all means, do click the link and check the menu. And there is rumor that there might be a free subscription button available on Patreon eventually. I don't know if they're going to do it or not, but if they do, uh, I would certainly give our freebies, I don't know what we'll call them at the time, our free subscribers the daily check-ins, because they're just a hoot, and I love them. And I think you would too, so click the link and come Patreon on Patreon, because I'm the Archangel of Lions. Mark Angela Lyons. My mom named me. But you can call me Mal. Hey, my crab cakes. Yeah, just back from a couple of days visiting mom and the fam, and a lot of stuff uh, happened while I was there, but uh, it was intense, but it was good. Uh, I love my mom and the cats and the puppies, and if you follow me on Instagram and everywhere else, you'll see pictures of uh, cats and dogs and nature. It's just lovely. I love going up there. But enough of that. Let's get down to business. We are doing a 10-card spread here, uh, looking at the chakras using the three levels of power, as I learned from Carolyn Mace. That's M-Y-S-S. She's a PhD in her book, Anatomy of the Spirit. We're going to get three mythic tarot for the lower three chakras, representing your relationships in the physical world, the yang dynamic, you from the outside looking in at yourself, or you from the inside looking at at different people, places, and things. We're going to look at heart, throat, third eye crown with four daughters of the moon tarot, the world behind your eyes, if you will, uh, your spiritual, mental, emotional, willpower, throat chakra, uh, the internal, the feminine, the yin dynamic. We'll get four of those. And we'll get one Caroline Mace archetype card. That's M-Y-S-S. She is a PhD. Her book, Sacred Contracts, just life-changing for me. All of her work is for me. Uh, to show you what's going on in your eighth chakra, sending down the code so that you can alchemize your soul power that you are developing for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. We'll talk about it when we get there. One of those will get you a MacCon healing mantra 
card to help you unify and heal it. They are healing mantras after all. And our last card down will be a chakra reading card, Rachel Sharman Rockpool Publishing, to give you an entry point, a starting point. Uh, and that comes with an affirmation. So you're actually getting a mantra and an affirmation. A mantra fashion, whatever. Uh, and let's see if we can have fun doing this, because chakra work can really, uh, you change a little something in one chakra, they all shift. It, it's not always scrubbing your energy centers with Brillo and bleach, metaphorically speaking. So it is a general read. Take what resonates, leave what doesn't, and do check your other signs, because I know for myself in a chakra read, uh, my moon sign usually hits second chakra, right? Or sometimes heart, depending on Pisces moon. Uh, my Leo rising usually hits solar plexus pretty right on. I think you get the idea, and I am a Virgo, so, you know, hits all the chakras all at once most of the days. So, um, cross-watchers, you're going to get some insight here as to what the crab cake you are cross-watching for might be going through. So, if you implement the mantra, if you implement the affirmation, or just have a little bit more empathy, sympathy, understanding, I think that will help not just the Cancerian collective sign, man, I see Venus sign that you are watching for, cross-watching for, but all of them in total, because that's how unity works, apparently. It's the quantum, it's subatomic, physics, whatever. So both feet on the floor if you can. Focus on your breath if you will, and I will do the best that I can to help you uh, heal you, to help you help heal a cancer, or help heal a cancer, and help heal a crab cake, uh, because as one of us heal, all of us heal. And the shift from explanation, which I have to do every single reading. I am over. Oh. Uh, uh, the shift from explanation to divination, which is what I'm really here for, happens in the still points. So let's find that still point, shall we? Please take a nice deep breath. Still point. <clears throat> Okie dokie. Using the mythic tarot. Here we go. I call upon my gods of water, the sign of cancer, powers of the West. Please, beloved gods of cardinal water, three cards face down, lower three chakras, root, sacrum, solar plexus in that order. Uh, for the Cancerian collective, sun, moon, rising, Venus, signs, and cross watchers. I guess that's the root watching this video and uh, receiving this reading. What's going on in their second chakra that they need to be aware of? These are hitting the table fast. And how about that solar plexus? So relationships, uh, the physical groups, tribes, second chakra, one-on-one -on -one relationships, money, sex, power, uh, solar plexus relationship to yourself, your honor code, your boundaries, and who you want to be in the world. Uh, let's get the next four working up. Heart, throat, third eye, and crown, the feminine energy. Please take a nice deep breath. Gotta breathe anyway. As I call upon my goddesses of water, the sign of cancer, powers of the West, please, beloved goddesses of cardinal water, four cards in clarity, face down, heart, throat, third eye, and crown for the Cancerian Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs, and cross watchers watching this video and receiving this reading. What's going on in their heart chakra? Uh, they got that emotional power. It is a water sign, so that should be pretty elucidating. Throat chakra, willpower, choices, decisions, spit, swallow, or chew, third eye, mental power. There we go. And uh, crown chakra, their spiritual power, the thousand petaled lotus. How many of them petals is open? Uh, let's get this one. We will turn a face up. Uh, this is the archetype, the soul power. There are nine different families of archetypes. Uh, this is to help you uh, uh, alchemize the shadow to light, the lead to gold, the pain to peace, the toxic to healthy in your life and in this world, holographically. Uh, there are three atoms in between uh, lead and gold on the periodic table, so think heavy, toxic, dense, fearful, illusion, illusion lead, that's hard to say, and gold, right? Healing, a uh, conductor where lead is an insulator. So, Let's see. Please take a nice deep breath. Stop. Let's 
says, I call upon the collective pantheons of the divine for the Cancerian collective, sun, moon, rising, Venus, signs, and cross watchers. Watching this video and receiving this reading, what is the dominant archetype in the eighth chakra for the Cancerians and their cross watchers that they need to be aware of because they're sending down the codes to all the other chakras of what they attract and what they repel so they have the choice the decision third chakra right to delay or not delay that which cannot be prevented because how many times you want to keep doing the same thing over and over maybe even reincarnating over and over and again uh for this timeless uh, chakra read that one was poking me in the hand uh let's see who you're dealing with the advocate archetype is an action family archetype of the nine different families. Uh, this one in the lead, well, the shadow attribute that uh, Caroline put on the card, to me represents the lead, the heavy, the dense, the toxic, based in fear, based in illusion, the light attribute at the top, more the gold, and we're all somewhere in between these two. You can have an archetype, a reason, a season, or a lifetime. Advocacy comes from me more like a reason. It can come a hundred times a year, but it comes and goes really quickly. It's not a constant in my life. Uh, but I love the advocate archetype in its lead. No matter how lovely an archetype sounds, is as toxic as it is in the shadow, and vice versa. No matter how horrible it sounds uh, in the lead, its light is equally as brilliant. So, uh, the shadow attribute, embracing negative causes or committing to causes for personal gain, which means you have a hidden agenda. Now, some of these hidden agendas are certainly inherited, right, from society, from our families, from, I don't know, from Neanderthal forward, right? Certain things that way, you know, that we needed to do to survive in this world. So, you know, it's one thing if you're out and open about it, I am doing this for my own personal gain. And you let people know that, then people at least know what to deal with, right? But the light attribute inspires you, and that's a big word inspires, because remember, you can be inspired to key somebody's car. That's not what we're talking about here. Uh, 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 to put compassion into action. And compassion is a big Cancerian word, man. You are the mothers of the Zodiac, regardless of gender. So, you know, I look, compassion is a tricky thing because there's self-compassion, which is really important, self-care and self-healing. And Cancerians, y'all are secretive about your emotions until you're not, right? So only you can do the self-care. It's true for all of us. And then, of course, as your tanks are refilled, you are able to take action in a compassionate way towards others. And I, I mean, His Holiness the Dalai Lama, I think, is a good place to start uh, if you want to go uh, Buddhism. Certainly Kuan Yin, uh, the Chinese Bodhisattva goddess, right, of compassion. So many ways, so many traditions speak of compassion, but it's more than just a theory when this is the archetype. It's about putting it into action. So your lower three chakras should be interesting, as that's where we see where the action is. See your spiritual power. Crown chakra, three of cups. Bonding is the key word here in Daughters of the Moon Tarot. And in there is uh, the song from the Girl Scouts, Make New Friends, Keep the Old. One is silver, the other gold. The book is really good. I love Fiona Morgan, bless her soul. Goddess bless. Uh, so there is definitely a solid, uh, we'll say, because this is the crown chakra, an opening to emotional bonding, but perhaps with the divine, right? Perhaps opening yourself up. All of the threes numerologically are solid foundation, like a tri tripods don't wobble. A four-legged chair can wobble. A three-legged stool can't, right? The perfect distribution. So what kind of bonding is going on in your crown chakra? Now, the crown chakra does not have language. That's the third eye. So this could also be like an opening, right? A foundational opening of your crown chakra, but in an emotional sense, one would think bringing down spiritual love in some way, shape, or form. Third eye, you've got an air card, and you've got a court card. Ixchel, uh, the crone of blades, uh, the Aquarius card, that would be the queen of swords in Rider Waite based traditional tarot. We are talking about here seeing things from the eagle woman's point of view. Ixchel is a shamanic uh, goddess of South America. I'm not remember 
I can't remember exactly what country, what culture, please forgive me. It's too much to remember. If you saw the breath work I do before this, they really just give me the words I need to do this. Like a ticker tape running through my third eye and mouth and throat chakra. This is about getting up to the higher heights. This is about seeing things from the higher perspective. She is actually flying on the back of an eagle, which flies highest, and sees furthest, though technically the albatross flies higher, but it's not good imagery. Especially if you're wearing one around your neck. Uh, but also carrying a pair of scissors. So really seeing from a higher place, third eye, maybe this is about universal law. Maybe this is about a mystical law. Or seeing things from an 11th house Aquarian point of view about unity. Uh, 11th house is about humanitarianism, is about compassion in the world. Right? Like the song, you know, everybody knows Almost everybody knows the song from here, The Dawning of the Age of Aquarius, though personally I think a lot of the qualities they have in there are more Piscean, but to each their own. Uh, certainly this is a very third eye card in the third eye position here. Fixed air. Get up into the stratosphere. What are your higher principles? What are your higher thoughts on this? And I think for an alchemical point of view, it's good, because condensed air you get water, condensed thought you get emotion. Throat chakra? Hmm, lovely. The Six of Flames, which would be the Six of Wands, but here we have the Egyptian cat goddess of the sun, Bastet. We just love her. We love Bastet. Got a great circle cast concerning Bastet. She's wonderful. Play is the key word. This can very much feel like a chew. Now, sixes are numbers of harmony and balance. You want that in the third chakra. But if this is not spitting it out, like one of them's like spitting flames over on this side. Look at her. Right? Uh, too much chipotle, maybe too fast. Uh, uh, but they're having a good time. This is creativity. But third chakra is certainly how you express yourself, but how you express yourself in the physical world we will get to. Uh, when we get to these lower three chakras, you may very well be chewing on something right now, creating, but there is also something very visible. Uh, six of wands in traditional tarot is often about victory, but it's not all the way home, right? It's halfway through the cycle of fire. Oh, element of water, heart chakra. <gasps> you have got a major arcana card. Reversal, the hanged man. Uh, this is a feminist ex. I don't call it the hanged man. This is a woman who voluntarily is hanging herself upside down over a river with the water flowing in the direction of which she is facing, right? Now, I don't know if you can see it. I'd like to show you. The, the, her face above water and her face below water are very different. Now, the traditional image of uh, the hanged man. Uh, we're used to seeing someone hanging upside down by their foot. Now, Odin, <laughs> the world tree, Grossel, the Norse uh, mysteries and all of that. He plucked out an eye, <laughs> for, gave it to the Norns for the runes and other cash and prizes, a sacrifice. Uh, 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 really, in your heart right now, you may have to really release some stuff. Reversal means see it differently. Are you willing to look at a situation in your life from a more compassionate point of view, perhaps surrendering something that was heartfelt but maybe not completely healthy? You know, location, location, location. When I was a child, I played with childish things, and now that I'm an adult, I still do like video games every now and again. <laughs> Right? We, there's always a higher truth. There's always a higher truth. And who was raised in pure unity consciousness? Well, the Dalai Lama, again, one would suppose. I'm not there. I, I, I was raised on Long Island. <laughs> yeah, and, and I made it through the 80s and the 90s, so let's just keep going. Uh, but there might very well have to be a sacrifice here, something released, so that you can see clearly, and that does make sense with Excel snip and snip and snip, snip, snip away in the third eye. But this can be done in a very, very fun way for you. I don't know if fun's the right way, but creative. Uh, in a balanced, healthy way, but that might very well mean chewing on things while you're sort of opening up that crown chakra. To let bonding in, to let that, that friendship, that healthy 
stuff, right? Let's see. Let's keep going. Solar plexus. Now, this one will probably be key um, because solar plexus is your boundaries, and Cancerians need healthy boundaries because they tend to be empathic and crabby if they're not an oh dear five of cups. Something was revealed and uh, some cups were knocked over. There's still one standing. Uh, but I would say chances are something was revealed about you or someone else here that kind of shook you in the solar plexus, meaning that this is about your personal power. Now, let's talk about this. This is really important. The lower three, Heart third, third eye crown is internal intuition. It's creative intuition. It's like a laboratory, right? Before you bring it down into physical form. Well, lower three chakras are how you navigate through the physical world. So if your solar plexus gets upset, like five of cups, that's telling you something about your honor code, your boundary system, either something needs to be upgraded, which could be here uh, with uh, that heart chakra with the card of reversal there, or really something has happened, something has been revealed, and when I say that, this is the myth of Eros and Psyche, where she un essentially broke a vow to him, saying that she wouldn't look at his face. They're already married by the Five of Cups, uh, but she takes a peek, a drop of uh, oil from a lamp, hits his thigh, ancient Greek depilatory, whatever, uh, and he leaves, and he's like, you broke your vow, because he's the most, he's the god of love, Eros, son of, er of uh, Aphrodite and Ares, you know, gorgeous, everybody falls in love with Eros, I fall in love with Eros. There he is! Well, his statue. My gods don't live in the statues. They got better things to do. Uh, but so, spilled cups here. So there is emotional upset. Now, I will say, Cancerians, you gotta take care of your solar plexus. Because that's where a lot of emotional stuff can percolate for a long period of time and burn holes in your stomach called ulcers. Second chakra, there is a phase of evaluation here. Seven of Pentacles, right? Uh, how's it going? Do I want to keep doing this? Is this working for me? Don't even ask why the why the, oh, the cow is in there. This is Daedalus. It's a long story. Uh, a myth there, but uh, kind of saying, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. Do I want to do this? What is this worth to me? Now, because this is physical world, this could be about money. This could be about a one-on-one -on -one relationship, your creativity, your sexuality. Again, it's a general read. But if it's coming down to, is it worth me putting compassion into action? Remember, there is a pendulum swing of compassion, selfish compassion. And just because it's selfish, think higher selfish, right? Taking care of yourself. Not policing your emotions, but allowing those emotions within you as a water sign. I'm a Pisces moon, I get it. To have their say without burning down the village or to cancer in case flooding the village. You don't want to flood the basement quite that way. So uh, let's see what's going on in the root chakra. And you've got your card, the moon. Oh, shit, is cloudy with a chance of mystic meatballs. The goddess Hecate, one of my goddesses for the sign of cancer. There's Hestia, there's Hera, there's Hecate. And she is the crown of the crossroads. You might very well be at a crossroads in your life, but you can't see. Not this way, this way. Root chakra intuition is very much fight, flight, freeze, uh, fight, flight, freeze, flee, all of that stuff, right? When you go into a place and you're like, I don't know, your root chakra won't connect, it's get the hell out of there. But sometimes you'll walk into a place and just be like, oh, this place feels so good. This can also be tribal relationships, groups of friends, family, corporations, industries in the root chakra, or your relationship to your own physical body. Think all the bones you have as different uh, aspects of the skeletal tribe, and you've got cellular and or organs, you know, all of that going on. So, uh, how many major arcana cards we got here? Interesting. The two major arcanas are both in the lower part of the, the uh, avenues, I guess, the lanes, if you will. So, we're looking at some sort of emotional 
if it's not out and out surrender, there is a willingness, hopefully, to feel this differently by seeing it differently, which makes sense. There may be some beliefs in the way here that are just not accurate. Uh, but on the outside, can't tell in the physical world so much. However, because you are a Cancerian, and let's face it, that is the Cancerian card. There's literally a crabby down here at the bottom. Uh, to really pay attention uh, to your root chakra, I live by one rule. Well, it's actually a Matt Kahn healing mantra. If it's a yes, nothing can stop me. If I'm unsure, it's always a no. It's called acknowledging apprehension. And if that's the mantra you get, I will fall off this chair. Maybe. I have nice pants on. I don't know that I want to do that. No, you don't get to see them. <laughs> so let's do that. Advocate in the eighth. Got all our chakras on the table. So let's ask uh, the ascended masters of action and compassion uh, what the best healing mantra is here for you all. And cross watchers, pay attention. This is where you could uh, help out a bit or bigger. Please take a nice deep breath. Yeah, I'm a witch that talks to Ascended Masters. Get over it. Still point. <laughs> As I call upon the Ascended Masters of Compassion in Action, we are talking Gandhi. We are talking, oh, so many people throughout history. I mean, from J of Z... <laughs> <laughs> Yeshua Ben Joseph. I mean, just every tradition, usually there's somebody there who is putting compaction, compaction into action. That does not sound right. So please, what is the perfect healing mantra, beloved Ascended Masters, for the Cancerian Collective Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus signs, and Cross Watchers watching this video, receiving this reading, to help them align this, right? To help them alchemize their lead to gold, their shadow to light, their pain to peace, their toxic to healthy, their fear to love, and this timeless read, Overcoming Fear. I will transcend every loss. You cannot have a thought of fear without loss, or uh, a thought of, lo uh, uh, sorry, you cannot have a thought of fear without lack, or lack without fear. They are linked in that way. So the moment we think of loss or lack, it's lead, because I'll read it, over because uh, you will transcend every loss. It's just how it goes. Um, and that's part of the cycle, which I believe this one uh, addresses rather directly. Uh, I will transcend every loss, overcoming fear. When fear is overcome, you are able to rest in the resilience of your soul, no matter how frustrated or inconvenienced your ego seems to be. The ego, as soon as it gets what it wants, it wants something else. It's just how it is. And the ego is not the enemy. It is the least evolved piece of the spectrum. Higher self, soul, personality, ego. It is the egg to the caterpillar, to the cocoon, to the butterfly. You are able to embrace each obstacle and circumstance as life's auspicious way of helping you become the one you were always destined to be. So let's talk about that word destined. Fate is what you can't change. Your eye color. Yeah, you can get contact lenses, but that's not really changing your eye color. But how do you see with those eyes, right? It's the lead. We are handed lead. It's written into our contracts before we ever take a breath in this life. And we sign off on those contracts on some level, but then we forget, right? So it, it is very much the journey that you take that determines the alchemy of how you alchemize fate, what you can't change, to destiny, uh, what you came in here to do, what I call the golden timeline. Uh, in overcoming fear, every loss surely inspires a gain of insight for the evolution of your spiritual journey. This mantra is ideal for opening back up to life, healing chronic fatigue, that's a big one, and releasing cellular memories because we carry stuff biologically from, you know, it's not just the family that you know, right? Like, survivors, immigrants, they were in wars, right? Hunter, gatherer. Emotions are biochemical. 
They just are. So imagine a certain emotional pattern being passed down from generation to generation with a biological component literally changing your cells, right? So, uh, you know, overcoming that is really what alchemy is about. It's about releasing those uh, three <laughs> atoms in between lead and gold. It looks like it's going to be emotional, just saying. A good cry could do it, but we have one more card. And I find that uh, the chakra reading card does give quite a little twist, but it almost always makes sense, at least to me. Again, these are general reads. And uh, I have cancer in the 12th house with no planets, so I don't know. What can I tell you? So, uh, Rachel Sharman or Rochelle Sharman. I should meet her and ask her how to say her name properly on camera. But for right now, let's ask your higher selves and the higher selves of all involved. Again, not just for the cross watcher, but there, there are other people uh, involved in this, particularly with that five of cups and the solar plexus. Be careful of taking things too personally. The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. Hey, I'm a spiritual teacher. I only recommend books that save my shit along the way. And I'm the fun one. Please take a nice deep breath. Still point. While we're being impeccable with our word, making no assumptions and doing our best, I call upon the higher selves of all involved. Fifth dimension and above, eighth chakra and above. What is the chakra? Along with the chakra reading uh, message here and the affirmation needed for the Cancerian collective, sun, moon, rising, Venus signs, and cross watchers watching this video intuitively drawn to this reading to help them alchemize the uh, advocate archetype from shadow to light, lead to gold, paint to peace, with three cups in the crown. Uh, a crone of blades, Excel, the Aquarius card, in the third eye, Bastet, six of flames in the throat, uh, reversal, hanged man in the heart, five of cups in the solar plexus, seven of pentacles in the second chakra, the sacral chakra, and the moon in the root, while they overcoming fear, because they will transcend every loss in this timeless chakra. Read, rebirth, card number two. Did somebody else get this? Aries got this, uh, the Earth Star Chakra, which is why I have it here. So if you have any planets in Aries, or Cross Watcher, if you, are, if you have any planets in Aries, check it out. Card number two, Rebirth. Now, the, the writing on this one is a little teeny tiny. So, you know, I found a magnet, and then my magnifying glass, it's got its own little stand now. How's that for a Virgo hack? Ready? Breathe this in. Card number two, Rebirth, the Earth Star Chakra. That's the one beneath the ground below your feet, but I put the Earth Star Chakra at the heart of the planet. I call it the heart of the mother, because I would. You have pulled this card as a sign that you are currently undergoing a rebirth. It is a powerful awakening and healing process that comes in many different forms and is a big part of your life's journey and wasn't overcoming fear talking about the journey of the soul. Uh, here we go. Everything has a divine timing. Nothing lasts forever. Overcoming fear. Uh, uh, you will transcend every loss. Things have a beginning and an end. A divine knowing when it's time to move, create, and time to be still. Something in your life is ending, and something very positive is awakening within you. It's time to let go of anything that is not supporting you or serving you at this point as you open and receive new energies that are being offered. Moving beyond your comfort zone and into a new sphere of opportunity can be uncomfortable, challenging, or painful. But remember that you are guided and supported by the light of your soul and the universe, which brings positive change and experiences. You have planted seeds of new opportunity and have been nurturing them. And now it's time for them to sprout, grow, and flower into existence. Be kind 
and gentle during this process, and be sure to water the seeds with love and graciousness. This sounds like putting compassion into action for yourself as well as others. You have been waiting patiently for this time of change and new beginnings to arrive, so bathe in its glory. Do you get all the water references here? Uh, start something new or embark on a project you've been pondering over. This may also, uh, uh, sorry, wait, there may also be some new inspirations coming through for you at this time. Take a moment to connect with your inner voice and listen to what your soul is sharing with you. This could also be birthing a new aspect of yourself. Whatever process, whatever the process is for you right now, be sure to embrace the opportunity and enjoy the new energy that is available to you. Here's the affirmation. I am completely supported in my current rebirth and I am open to the magic of the universe birthing within me. Cancerian, mothers of the, the zodiac, amniotic fluid, creative water. Work. So, what we're going to do is what I do at the end of every reading, if you're new, I do something called a blessimation. I won't insult your intelligence by telling you it's the combination of the word blessing and summation, because you probably guessed that, but, you know, got to do what you got to do on the tube of you. So let's put this all together and see what the divine says, because I do these blessings for real. I have a lot of fun doing these, but um, the grace of prayer I was born with. Please take a nice deep breath. Still point. As I call upon the collective pantheons of the divine, guides, masters, teachers, gods, goddesses, saints, angels, totems, healers, ancestors, all the way back to source for the Cancerian Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, signs, and cross watchers watching this video and receiving this reading. May they be blessed with all that they need to alchemize the shadow of light, the lead to gold, the pain to peace of the advocate archetype in their eighth chakra, inspiring them to put compassion into action and maybe spiritually connecting and bonding with others, understanding the unity principle, and really a more spiritual yet a good foundation for love to continue to grow by flying high in the third eye, seeing things from a higher place, seeing things from perhaps a more unity-based place. Humanitarianism certainly would lead to thoughts that would put compassion into action and to have fun with it, perhaps play, to be creative with it, to chew on it. If there is definitely, as the card of rebirth, the Earth Star speaks of there, you know, a new opportunity or something that you've wanted to do to put into action, you can do it compassionately. But there is some kind of sacrifice, a releasing, a letting go, a reversal, seeing things differently, maybe from someone else's point of view, or maybe there's just a heart chakra shift that compassion moves through you in a way that just what? Lets you go. Uh, lets you go. Something lets you go as you let it go. But you will transcend any loss that's needed here. And certainly it does feel like there's some emotional upset going on there for the Cancerians in the solar plexus, whether they're taking it personally or it is a violation of their solar plexus stuff in there, their own or somebody else's. Usually somebody else's. It's in second chakra. And in second chakra, there is a seven of pentacles appraisal there. Kind of looking at it, saying, do I want to keep doing this? Is it worth putting compassion into? And may their root chakra intuition of their own tarot card, the moon, Hakate at the crossroads, cloudy with a chance of mystical meatballs. They may not be able to know what's going to happen physically, but they can tune in moment by moment in that root chakra to really tune themselves. And if they can really do that, then they can use that mantra. I will transcend every loss. Every time we exhale, there's loss. Every time we inhale, there is gain. And to be able to do that as part of a rebirth, right? Rising from the ashes. How much ash do you want to take with you, Ketchum? No, they want to grow, they want to evolve, they want to alchemize their shadow to light, their lead to gold, their pain to peace, to rise again from ashes, regardless of whatever loss went on. Because there ain't no loss without gain, and there ain't no gain without loss in this world. And that's a dualistic illusion of separation planet for you but not for much longer. So may they be blessed with all that they need to heal, to grow, to learn, to evolve, to be the best that they can be, bring their chakras into alignment, and traverse the golden timeline, making the wisest, most loving, most empowering decisions they can make for their well-being, putting their compassion into action, and for the well-being of all. 
and with harm to none, as we will it. So let it be done. So motivate. And so it is. It was good read. That all makes sense. I mean, only two major arcana cards, but you know, where they are is tricky. So if you liked the reading, if it made sense, please hit the thumbs up. It just helps the other crab cakes find it. That's all it does. I'm no longer monetized on YouTube because I'm on Patreon, where my subscribers pay me what once a month for really, really, really cool stuff. And I love it. I love it so much. I love live streaming every morning, even when I travel. Like yesterday, I did it from my phone laying in bed. It was one of the better ones. I've done. So uh, do click the link on Patreon, on Patreon. And uh, at the time of this timeless recording, as I said, my company is about to turn 25 years old. I've been charging $100 an hour for spiritual counseling and readings since 1998. Come May 1st, 2023, that will change. So there is a link in the description box to a video booking a reading with Mal, at least at the time of this recording, that will explain how to do it, what happens before, during, and even some uh, suggestions for after the reading. But I will be remaking that because I'm not just changing my prices, try and make it modular where people can sort of Lego brick what it is that they want, right? I'm working on it. So, uh, yeah, if you want to book me for a read before uh, May 1st, obviously you'll get the $100 an hour, but if you book me even for something after, but before May 1st, people are doing it, they're booking me from June and July, uh, then do that. I will, of course, honor that price. But otherwise, thank you so much uh, for watching, and I hope this helps, and I hope this helps you heal, uh, because rebirth is always worth it, but there ain't no death without rebirth, and there ain't no rebirth without death in my experience. So hang in there, have at it, heal, hail, farewell, and blessed, blessed be.